Camden Farms have been focusing on lowering their nitrogen use ahead of the N190 nitrogen cap that came into effect on July 31st, 2021. The farm was one of the early dairy conversions in the area. Converted from dryland sheep in 1994, it's a System 3 dairy farm with four full-time staff. Welcome to Camden Dairy Farms. This is 222 hectares, 214 hectare effective dairy farm. We winter 800 cows to peak milk sort of around 780 cows through December. The cows are milked through a, a brand new uh, 54 bale rotary shed. The soil type is a stony silt loam, but over the course of the last 25 years the organic matter has developed and the soils now have a good water holding capacity. The protection of soil is high on Terry's checklist. One of its biggest limiting factors is its soil types. It has to be managed carefully so we're not intensifying areas at wrong times of the year. When cows are coming back we've already allocated them paddocks the season before. We've made sure that those paddocks weren't grazed in the last rotation of grazing so they come back with high covers so we can feed these cows really well and keep them settled and not run the risk of doing any damage to the pasture. They aim to produce 18 tonnes of dry matter, topping up with 500 kgs of grass silage in the shoulder periods. This year they've managed to keep it down to 372 kilos a hectare. The way they use nitrogen fertiliser hasn't changed, just the amount. We've always been believers in measure, monitor, manage. You know, you've got to do each of those things to one follows on from the other. Camden Farms have changed to whole farm soil testing, following advice from their Ravensdown senior agri-manager, Sonia Perkin, who has worked with the group for 11 years. While they took a bit of convincing initially, the collective benefits gained from whole farm soil testing now means they wouldn't do it any other way. We were worried that it was going to cost us more to do that, but the reality is it probably saves us money because we're not putting on uh, phosphate fertilisers on paddocks that already have Olsen P levels. We're not chasing pH because we think it needs it. We actually know that it does or it doesn't, so we can apply accurately and, and in the right time. Sonia says whole farm soil testing has been a huge for Camden Farms. I really could see the need for it on these farms because otherwise you're just making huge assumptions off about six soil tests on a, on a dairy farm. So once we got into that, um, it took up three years for me to convince them and then once they got going they have not stopped. And this farm here was already pretty close to optimal when we did the, the whole thing but some of the newer farms we've had quite a bit to work, work to do there. The whole farm soil test allows them to design a fertiliser plan to make sure that the paddocks are at their optimum levels. When we do apply nitrogen, the pasture's going to utilise them. There's no limiting factors in, in the soil or in the pasture that's going to stop it from taking up the nitrogen and using it effectively. They've dropped some of their total nitrogen from 230 kilograms of nitrogen a hectare back to 174 and have tweaked some of their grazing strategies. We've still grown the same amount of pasture as we have in the past. Dare I say it, it has re been a reasonably easy transition for us because you know, we weren't big users before so bringing it back um, was relatively easy to do. I guess we just, the hardest bit was having confidence that we were still going to produce the pasture, um, which we've proven to do. They do one nitrogen application a month yep. and have a policy of not following cows on yep. to ensure the round lengths are at least a month long. They set a nitrogen limit for the farm managers to apply each month, allowing them to follow their plans for the individual operations. They use other products too, like coated urea then we'll use something like Emprotect. Through January and February in those hot periods, uh, if we think there's going to be a challenge and, and we're not going to be able to water the fertiliser on as quickly as we'd like, or the nitrogen on as quickly as we like, we can put it on the ground, it's not going to volatilise, we're going to be able to get water on and it's going to go into the soil where the plant can actually use it. They also use Ravensdown's online monitoring system Hawkeye to record their fertiliser placements. Loading the nutrient information in at the start of the season so the team can order up to the limits set in the programme. Once ordered, the information is sent to their preferred supplier and spreader, and they have peace of mind at knowing that the truck will only spread the amount in the chosen areas. From our point of view, it's, it's relatively easy to achieve, because all we need to do is make sure the right information is loaded into the system, and then the guys can't go over um, that 190 cap. Back on the ground, clover root weevil damaged the pastures, so they embarked on an ambitious plan to regrass throughout the group. We looked at re 
grassing a third of the farm in one year for three years to try and do the whole lot. We, we didn't quite hold our nerve with that, but we still managed to achieve turning over 85% of the farm in four years um, on each of the farms. Um, and our target was to put in new, uh, better growing varieties of ryegrass along with good, strong white clovers. They work closely with drilling contractors using a machine that drills the ryegrass and broadcasts clover seed behind. It's not having to compete when it's striking. It's able to get up and going between the drill row and get established. And the other thing that does is stops other invasive weeds coming in as well. We've done pretty well there and with minimal sprays as well. One of the next areas Camden Farms will tackle will be GHGs or greenhouse gases. We're already measuring these things now until uh, we see some policy or some guidelines at a government level, then we're not going to know what targets that we're sort of reaching for. We've given ourselves some, I guess, some benchmarks, um, and then we can look at strategies around trying to lower them down. As for reaching N190 targets, Terry reiterates the importance of planning as a starting point to manage nitrogen use. To have a plan, you need to know a bit of background about what's going on in your farm. So like I said before, measure, monitor, manage. Measure what's actually going on in your, in your soil. Make sure that everything else that is required to grow a good, healthy um, pasture is, is there. Um, and from that, you can put together a good um, uh, maintenance fertilizer plan. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is match feed supply and demand. Um, so if you can get that through good strategies around grazing and uh, nitrogen application, then you're going to win.